Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Spark of Genius Flesh and Blood production. And we are back with a Back to Basics episode. Uh, what are we on now? Five? I, I think we're on five. Yeah, I believe um, so. Cor correct me if I'm mistaken here, but this is kind of like a part two ish, like a sub part two of our last Fast hmm. Back to Basics, which was the. Um, is this game, is Fab too expensive kind of thing where we're talking more about the product. So there we kind of talked about the value, the sealed products, um, the first dead to unlimited, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to be talking more about like the actual cards themselves, right? So we're going to be looking at um, how to assess like the general card value and going through a set by set uh, all the way back from uh, Welcome to Wraith, um, kind of determining some of the cards that myself and Rob has seen like through the game because we, we did start around the same time like first dead arc through the metas that are uh, some, some things to look out for whether you're cracking product whether you're buying singles and you want to play a specific, a specific class a specific hero specific hero um, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna kind of uh, give our thoughts we're obviously we can't cover every single card so we're gonna give you know yeah all yeah. right feel free so, to comment down below if, if there's cards that you know we've missed for like some kind of reason uh put down like why you think they're important maybe uh get a bit of a discussion going and uh as always if you do like our content and feel free to comment like and subscribe for notifications for uh more more of the more of the great kind of content you love here and uh, also follow our twitter is where we put out our month uh not monthly our weekly kind of schedule as far as what we're going to release for the week so you can get uh get those Get those taste buds mm. tant tantalized with the yeah. with the future content here. So, without further ado, we're gonna start. We're gonna say farewell, but not really, because we're actually starting with welcome to Wraith, right? So we're welcoming it welcome back. Welcome to Wraith. We're back welcoming. To lives. We're, we we don't say farewell here at Spark of Genius. We say welcome back. <laughs> so welcome back. Yeah. Welcome to Wraith. And there's a couple of really standout cards that come to mind in general. The first card is Enlightened Strike. So Enlightened Strike is the zero cost, zero for five. The mm -hmm. stats on this card are already pretty insane, right? Just as far as the Majestic goes. And we have to remember for Welcome to Wraith and Arc, these were the sets where supers were still a thing. So Majestics, there were only mm -hmm. two generic Majestics and then two class Majestics per yeah. per class, right? So we have to remember the power levels when we're talking about these kind of cards. But E-Strike in general, which is such an amazing card, is like the staple generic aggro card when you're building out yeah. your Katsu. Building out, like I remember like building out Chain, building out like your aggro Viscerize, like all kinds of aggro decks. Yeah. If you were playing anything with attack action and needed some aggressiveness, E-Strike is the most flexible card out there. Uh, currently sitting around about 30 bucks US. I would say if you're buying, like, uh, you want to try to play one of these classes and really elevate your deck, getting yourself a place out of E-Strikes, cracking E-Strikes, finding a new draft, is a good place to start. Yep, yeah, any, any aggressive deck strike. and any deck that runs a lot of red, so red line decks, uh, yep. they really increase the value of playing E-Strike because you put a card to the bottom of your deck, you put a red, it's like yep. you pitched one for it, so it's really good. Yep. Yep, also very good for uh, pitch stacking for that purpose, as you kind of alluded to there. So the second generic Majestic, a little bit lower on value. I think it was hovering around $20 a piece right now. Uh, Tome of Findel. So Tome of Findel is a bit of an interesting card. doesn't have go again. It does allow you to draw cards, gain some life. Generally, what you want to do is combine these with cards like Mage Master Boots, if you can. Gain that go again and be able to still do stuff on your turn. It is very good in those uh, longer games, like more controly, grindy type decks. But it can also be like sprinkled in some uh, interesting decks if you're able to generate more action points in a different way. And so what that means is like you can shove it in chain, have creepers, use it off the creepers and not right. use an action point. Right. Yeah. So there, there's different kind of ways, which uh, I think that's one was uh, Cody Williams using it as Indianapolis uh, chain deck. I'm going to give him credit for that one. <laughs> um, and so there's different kind of ways. But historically speaking, like I use this deck in Bravo, Mage Masters, Tome of Findell, come out of the gate. Gain some life, take a little to give a little, you know? So mm -hmm. it's still a very good card. Probably not as flexible as E Strike, uh, but it's still very good, a very good card in, in and of itself. Uh, looking here, those were the two Majestic generic, but we do have one other generic card, Remembrance. And this card is on here, but because not because it's like super, super strong or particularly valuable, but it is a card to look out for because it's very unique in its ability and that there is no other card in the game so far that can do what Remembrance does. As as it is a it is can be used as like a game winning strategy to be able to kind of fatigue out and control out and then remembrance to get cards, you know, back into your deck. And when yeah. your deck is thin enough, you're gonna be drawing those cards back really soon. And probably with enough pitch stack, with enough energy to actually play out your strategy. 
this this is a viable strategy, especially back in earlier metas. Remembrance was definitely used at least as a one or two of in the sideboard, possibly one in the main deck, decks like Bravo, to really be able to cycle and increase the size of your deck without adding more cards. And I think that's like the key point for Remembrance, right? right? So everyone should remember that when they're going to <laughs> no pick up those cards. Though. Also very cheap. Like a very cheap card. I think picking up a yeah, playset for this, dollars. it could be used in a bunch of different, yeah, it could be played in a bunch of different kind of uh, decks for, for those kinds of strategies. Um, I think the last generic card I want to look at before talking about the class cards here is <laughs> everyone's favorite uh, piece of uh, Reinar equipment that's actually a generic, the Findel Spring Tunic. Reinar that everyone loves to Everyone loves to shove that, uh, do little pictures of Reinar wearing the tunic, right? Love it. Um, and... Final Spring Tunic is the iconic legendary of Flesh and Blood, and because there are there are the most versions of this card, period. Right? There's yep. like um, you got your gold there foils, your non foils, your five. rainbow foils, your extended art uh, promos. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think there, I think there are five, and uh, for good reason. This is one of the one of those iconic Findel cards, right? Along with Heart of Findel, but Tunic is just one of those generic equipment comes in with one armor. And it's pitch is always good. It doesn't matter what deck you're playing. You're always going to need pitch. And that's yeah. kind of like, if you don't have a specific class card that you really want to invest in and you're really like, oh, I really want to play Bravo. Well, Tectonic Plating is probably your best bet, right? But if you want the one of the best armor pieces that you can play like four or five or six different classes, a lot of the aggro builds like uh, Katsu really loves uh, Tunic. Yeah. There's a lot of other yeah. builds that... Briar does too. Briar really likes Tunic, and and that one pitch in the three turns can really save your bacon because you're such a low to the ground deck. Like it's not as great for decks to need a lot of blue all the time, but using that using Starvo, you can use that pitch to crown of seeds for free and get yourself a five card hand. Right? There's there's different kind of strategies that you can use with that extra pitch, and that armor has saved my bacon on Kano more more times than I'd like to give it credit your for. One, your one and point so, of armor on Kano. <laughs> the one point of armor literally makes a massive difference. So Tunic is just one of the best, and it, it did get reprinted, we'll talk about later. So it is reprinted later in Crew, but Welcome to Wraith is where you get the Rainbow Foil. So you could look out for that card also. Probably one of the, probably the most expensive card in the set, I would say, at the moment, yeah. uh, as far as the Rainbow besides, Foil version. Um, yeah, besides, the besides, the besides the heart. Besides the heart. Besides the heart, yeah. 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 Um, a couple of class cards here that we're going to mention is Blood Rush Bellows. The reason Blood Rush Bellows is so amazing is because it's not only good in every single brute. So if you just want to play the brute class, Levia, Reinar, or KO, it's mm -hmm. a two or three of. Like a Blitz, it's a two of, and CC, yeah. it's a three of. It's just so good. Like even, it doesn't matter what strategy you're pulling, it's always such a great game ender. Like I, I don't know how else to put it. It's always, it's something you it's can rely on to really too. push. It's such, it's such value, value because all brutes like running six attack cards. You mm -hmm. spend one resource basically at one card to draw two. So you're, you're getting back your same amount of cards after playing it. Yep. And for one pitch, you get two attack on all of your brute attacks that turn, including it's just weapons. So, and it's a yellow that blocks for it's, three. It's so efficient. It's amazing. It's also not It's also not very expensive. I would definitely pick up a play set of these three from Welcome to Wraith, either in draft. Like You don't have to draft brute. Like I would pick this up in draft. If I got it and I wanted <laughs> to play brute in general and construct it, I would pick up I would pick up this card. It's not particularly really seven, eight dollars. It's not super, mm -hmm. super expensive at the moment. I would definitely prioritize right this now. card. I think one's brute but, times the meta. But brute is brute is always like teetering on the edge. I feel like brute always has right. like good it's showings. Always a like place. A, a, it always has a place mm -hmm. because it has a very niche strength, right? Into control. Yeah. That's Blood Rush. The last card we kind of want to touch on is Spinal Crush. And a little while I probably wouldn't mention Spinal Crush, but with the <laughs> the arrival of Starvo and uh, the arrival of these really strong generic, uh, big big body cards like Crippling Crush and Spinal Crush. Spinal Crush is uh, not the specialization, meaning you can use it in Old Him, Valda, Bravo Old, or Starvo. It yeah. is just a generic good. Um, <clears throat> it's a good value for as far as like the on hit is very very strong, not allowing uh, go again. When I mean on hit, I mean the crush effect. Right. I should say uh, the crush effect is very very strong. Very, very detrimental to aggressive go wide decks, which is something that in certain metas, those reign supreme, especially early on in a set with the aggro decks kind of like come out and play for the first couple weeks, wreck everyone's day, right? So Spinal Crush is definitely something that can hamper the ability. And coming in for five, five for nine, generally like really good ratios are like when you're looking at the standard two for six, 
Uh, mm -hmm. one for five or zero for four. Those are the three different breakpoints that I'll kind of be revisiting as far as card value, as far as how strong a card can be in a particular meta. And this one hits the, the hit, hits the five for nine, which is actually, when you think about it, uh, it's on curve, right? Because it's a three for seven, four for eight, five for nine. Mm -hmm. So you want to add a one pitch and one damage with a good on hit. And that's considered, in my view, like a strong majestic level card. Yeah. Uh, as far as the card value goes. So in case you're wondering and you're cracking this product and you're kind of curious, I would go for the zero to four and then add one on pitch and then, sorry, one on cost and one on power mm -hmm. and then the relevant on hit. That's, that's kind of what I look at. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of what I look at when I'm starting to evaluate different cards and power levels here. So nice. I'm going to, I'm going to throw, throw it I'm going to throw the football to Rob here. Yeah. So and, we're going to um, switch into the, uh, the next set. Arcane Rising. Arcane Rising. Rise one up. One of my favorite sets besides Crew, I think. Oh, yeah? Um, I mean, the cards in the here Arcane just... Rising is your favorite set. Because of Dash. Because yeah. of Dash. <laughs> so uh, let's start out with my first card here, Command and Conquer. So and Conquer. card that can conquer. I know that everyone watching this video has heard of this card. Notoriously, uh, it is the most expensive card, I believe, uh, Majestic-wise. It is one of the most expensive Majestics in the game. And yep. it is a three of in so many different heroes and different builds. Uh, it is unique in the sense that it's the only card that can destroy the arsenal, I think. Um, mm -hmm. As far as yeah, I know. it's like straight it's up, straight up destroy, yeah, destroy arsenal. If you play mm -hmm. it, the opponent has to play around it no matter what. They can't just take the damage. And, I mean, they can lose the arsenal, but you're getting something for it. So six attack, three block, fits into Reinar, fits into Brutes, of course. Six attack. It's just a great card. I don't know if you have any, if you have anything to add about that, but it's just. It's a powerful uh, card. It, 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 I, I think it's like one of those non-legendaries that I would not be surprised at all to see a reprint. Like it's yes. just one of those. It's so good in every meta. It hits aggro so hard. It hits. Who doesn't love a good arsenal card? Yeah. I, I wake up some mornings and I'm thinking about all the things I can do with an <laughs> arsenal card. Maybe I'm Ranger. Maybe I have New Horizon. Maybe I have two arsenal cards. This card. Can just you imagine? All, all your of your 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 Ranger. You're like sitting there with like a three of a kind with two cards in arsenal, and you're like. You're know, sitting there, be like looking at all the devious things you could do, and then you get hit with like C and C pummel or like Art of War C and C for seven. Oh, adding like, a pummel onto that, and then oh you just... my good god. <laughs> anyway, Anyways, so uh, that's, that's that's all I have to add about that yeah. one. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, next card I have here is Art of War. This is a very versatile card. It has so many effects. It has four, I believe, uh, that you can mm -hmm. choose from. As it's an instant that pitches for two, it doesn't block, but that's okay. Um, it allows you to banish an attack action card to draw two cards and then get one additional you know, effect, either the go again or the plus one mm -hmm. attack on all of your attacks that turn. Uh, those are the common you know, picks you would take with it. Uh, you know, Amazing in Shadow Heroes because they require you to banish things in order to gain certain effects. So you banish with Chain, mm -hmm. you can then play from Banished. Same with Levia. Um, most importantly, it'll turn off her Blood Debt, so that's great. So, and this card has seen other like fringe uses in like in brute yep. to get the extra go again sometimes. Um, it's just such a versatile card that I'm sure will never go away in terms of pop popularity. It's, it can do too much. So, if you're looking mm -hmm. for a card that's very versatile and that will probably stick around for a little while, Art of War is yeah. my pick. Probably like only 30, 30 bucks a pop at yeah, the moment, yeah. probably somewhere it's, around it's there. I think low. it's a reasonable value. I think it's a reasonable value to pick up like one or two at least if you're kind of like you have the idea that you might want to get one of those flexible. Right. Like and the generics are always going to be kind of good. I think maybe one or two is enough. If, if you don't have the budget for three of them, I think three is kind of rare unless you play chain, then you play all, you play three, mm. obviously, but yeah. chain, chain will play three, like a but other than card that. In some heroes where you just want that one or two. Mm. All right. Next card I have here is three of a kind. So this is a ranger specific card, but you spend one draw three. And for Rangers, um, it's actually pretty good because they play from Arsenal all the time. So the restriction is you can only play cards from Arsenal after you play this card. Yep. But, you know, with Lexi and, and her um, Voltaire, put two cards down, play them from Arsenal. Another another stipulation there. It only costs one. What gives you one after three turns? Ah, find those Spring Tunic. Yet uh, another tunic. class that can take advantage of the, of the Tunic counter exactly. there for Tunic. Tunic yeah. three of a kind. But... Yeah, yeah. Talking about one resource, three of a kind, Blood Rush, all great cards that can be played with Tunic, so... Just yep. increasing the uh, the value of that tunic there, but three of a kind is a great card as a staple in, in all rangers so far. Um, I would I would pick up a playset if you enjoy playing Lexi, um, mm -hmm. who is quite good right now. Azalea right. one day. Azalea one, one day. Tier. That's, that's one tier. One tier for one tier for Azalea. One tier, one tier for Azalea. <laughs> one tier at a time. All right. Next we have kind of the kind of the brother sister of the tunic, the skull cap. So this is the second generic legendary card that we've got, and it mm -hmm. is a card played by. You know, almost every if you want a head slot that blocks for two, I think it's the only one. 
um, plain and simple. Well, that doesn't break itself, of course, because we have uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, um, the, the, what's it called? The, yeah, Matt Mask uh, and Momentum blocks momentum, for two, New Horizon. One, yeah. I think New, New Horizon, Horizon blocks for two blocks also, for two, but like yeah. they, it's pretty, it's pretty like detrimental if you block with it you, yeah, you, you need to. to really know yeah you need to be dying <laughs> to want to block with it right but it, so, yeah. it does to, to be fair skull have blocks for one its ability moves it to two if you are at lower health exactly um, so you get a total so that's of three to block know. from it if you block with it twice at the right time so yeah arcane it is the barrier three? blocking yeah. option for uh oh arcane barrier three two if you're fighting yeah. a rune blade that has a rosetta well, if you are lower health, you can actually block the Rosetta if you have only one arcane barrier or one on your gloves or boots or something. So you can save mm -hmm. your life. So yeah, yep. really good card. It did get a reprint, just like the Tunic did, but we can talk about that later. Yep. Um, and then one thing I'll just note, this isn't, uh, this isn't a card in specific, but Arcane Rising is a pretty niche set in terms of you know some of the heroes that it has. Uh, for example, Mechanologist. Uh, there's only one dash so didn't really mention any of the well they got they cards. do have data doll does exist i don't want right. to i don't want to say data doll doesn't <laughs> that, exist that is true that is true um that almost it's only blitz it's a blitz only it's a blitz, it, only, it is hero, blitz right? only so anyway um there are some heroes that i mean same goes for kano there really is only one kind of viable hero of course in cc they're the only ones but um icelander is the other blitz wizard that uh, that exists and she doesn't play it's many not, of the same yeah. here, cards that Kano does. So yeah, her deck is a little bit uh, more varied as in it's less uh, like her. She doesn't have specialization cards yet. Yeah. And so most of the strong Kano cards will be coming from Arcane. That's his specialization blazing Aether right. and of Lava. But like Icelander doesn't have that same dependency yeah. in Arcane Rising. And that's kind of why we didn't talk about a lot of these Majestics that are class specific in this set. Uh, they're not all, you know, that they won't go that far for you if you have a budget, if you're on mm -hmm. a budget, so. If you're, yeah, if you're on a budget, if you know you want to play the hero, yeah, pick up their specializations, pick up their supers, pick up their majestics. You'll need them. They're very, very good, powerful cards in, in almost every single scenario. However, we're talking about the kind of broader cards that have gone either gone better with age or have just like had yeah. flexibility in terms of how many heroes can use them effectively. And sometimes we so see with... that could have potential into the future too. So <clears throat> mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, so nice. speaking of flexibility, we're on Crucible of War, some people's favorite set for some right. reason. Uh, it, it is Rob Sarah's set. I do like Crucible of War. A lot of players started with Crucible of War. Yeah, I think that's uh, when it, when it came out. It yeah. arrived in Canada officially mm -hmm. with Crucible of War. That's that's the first first edition set that came to Canada. So a lot of players was in Canada. That was the first set they could actually uh, sink their teeth in. Which is it's a weird set to start with because it's the expansion set. But a limited mm -hmm. came kind of shortly after too in that kind of same time frame. So Crucible of War. Uh, this one was kind of hard to narrow down because there are classes for every set because that was the whole point of these first supplementary set. And the first card I'm going to talk about is Final Spring Tunic because there is the reprint. So if you are looking for that uh, less expensive Final Spring Tunic, probably in the low hundreds, I would imagine is probably worth yeah, seeing that. Yeah, the unlimited one's this probably is sitting at about like 90 or 100, yeah. Because mm -hmm. there is a Crucible Unlimited along along with the crucible first set so uh this this is probably the play they're both non-foil the first set and the and the unlimited which is you know which is fine uh what a playable copy that's kind of where you get it and kind of all i'm going to say about it there so kind of moving on to the class cards that are <clears throat> so it's kind of like if it's more than one it's one class more than one hero or they just kind of get better or just the overall really good um yeah good cards like to highlight game changer cards that have just lifted the <clears throat> class or the hero to a new height you know, I think that's mm -hmm. why we've picked these cards. So the first one we're going to be talking about is Crater Fist. So Crater Fist is the Guardian uh, arm piece that blocks for two. And it's just kind of, we talk about it because it's the standard, the standard Guardian equipment that every Guardian uses, mm -hmm. right? Because I think, um, I'm trying to think, I don't think there's another like arm piece that is really used that often no, other than maybe no maybe, rune. Maybe I don't even think so. If you want to pump your attack by two, but it's rare. I think maybe. Crater Fist for the armor is just so valuable. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. And Crater Fist is just like one of those cards where you're not going to use the ability, but three armor is three armor, especially yeah. in Blitz. It's true. No one uses the ability, <laughs> but three armor is amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, the next one is going to be kind of, it's Courage of Bladehold and Spoils of War. I kind of put them together because they were like, they, they rose as the cream of the crop as far as Warrior goes. I mean, Kasai came out and everyone was kind of meh because she was kind of meh, but Spoils of War was like pretty good in general. Mm -hmm. Um... And so, just a very, very strong, yeah, very, very strong explosive war 
Spoils of War card. Very strong warrior cards for Spoils of War. Uh, giving go again, plus two. The Copper Generation is obviously a lot more targeted towards Kasai, but still a very strong overall card. Mm -hmm. Must have two of if you're playing Kasai, of course, but uh, definitely something I can see more warriors actually using. Um, Courage of Bladehold is an interesting one. I think this was this is probably next to Skeletta the best equipment in the set. The reason I say that is because the equipment ability is extremely strong, uh, especially for punching through for every hero. Uh, Dorinthia, Kasai, mm -hmm. uh, not so much Bolton, I guess. Bolton's more of a tunic kind of guy, but fair. Yeah, I guess in, I guess in sabers this is a little bit different, but yeah. Um, in, in, in general, though, so you're looking at kind of armor that can block for two and still give you that before you use the temper, still give you that explosive saving yourself multiple pitch yep. per swing, right? So it can save you, depending on how many times you're swinging, it can save you that many resources because yep. it makes the weapon free. Also comes in as an instant speed, I think, just as a... No. I think it, I think it's an instant. I'm pretty sure it's an instant. Uh, it might be an action. I don't, don't quote me on that one, but that's kind of like the... We'll put the card up here so people can see what, uh, mm -hmm. what it does. No, that's, that's for sure. Um, I think the next card we're going to talk about here is Gaze the Ages, and that's one of those cards that is just... Such a good card that kind of gave Kano a lot more. Kano was kind of like such a niche fringe deck after Arcane, but Crucible really gave him a lot of tools to wreak a lot of havoc, especially mm -hmm. in Blitz. Uh, Gaze of the Ages is one of those such a good blue cards, block, blocks for three, and it comes in with such a good effect, right? Because it goes back to your hand if you played another non-attack, and it opts two as a blue and a it's, zero, co zero yeah, cost. It's like a free talismanic lens almost that you can reuse. It is. <laughs> yeah. Like I've definitely pulled like even in our last match, like I, I saw both. You see the Tome off the top and then you, a Tome of Aetherwind and then you just play the Gaze right after. And you get the opt to refill your hands and you still get to pitch it later for Kano. It's just so good. Um, definitely more of a niche card, but I see this card getting better and better as more wizards or cards, uh, classes that can use wizard cards come out. Um, just because it's just so generically strong in that class. Uh, Dash did get a fair amount of tools, but the biggest one by far that made Dash kind of on the map, I think people she liked was Dash. But tier zero for a while in Crucible of War, I think. Crucible meta was Dash's meta. Like that, that was that was Dash was was king. I think um, Plasma Purifier, just such a such a good card. Like you, you stack your purifiers, your pistols become three, your pistols yeah. become four. It comboed with induction so well because it gave you such an obvious win condition yeah. that you can actually play towards every single game. It made Dash one of the most consistent decks mm -hmm. in the format, which is extremely strong for a card game, right? In CC, this card is used as uh, at least two of, yeah. uh, sometimes a three of. If you're playing, if you were playing against Reinar and you had the uh, Arc Smash, uh, you just sometimes had the three of. But this card was very, very good. It's still used in Dash. Uh, sometimes not to the same effect. Sometimes you don't use as many for the more boost-heavy decks, but uh, usually at least one or two of it's always in the side. Uh, this card, when the when more mechanologists other than that at all, it is used in that at all too, of yep. course. But when other kind of classic constructed uh, mechanologists, which we should be getting one soon, comes out, uh, it is definitely going to be a card to consider with the uh, Tecloplasma pistol, or or I guess another weapon, depending on if they release another kind of similar similar weapon. Yeah. Um, Broodblade is kind of the last one we're talking about. Skeleta and Rattlebones are the two cards I kind of brought in. Uh, Skeleta is just uh, mucho, mucho busto. It is just Everyone such a good card. card with, <laughs> I see a lot uh, of people no, no, banning this card. N Nobody knew why, and then Skeleta, and then uh, Sonata came out, and everyone was like, holy sweet Jesus. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, it's a bit of a problem, and that's not Skeleta's fault, I guess, but it is a very good two-block armor first. piece. It's all Sonata's fault. It was their first. Uh, it's one of those same thing with courage. You block for two, and then you use the ability. Oh, it's so good! It just makes your. It's it's mainly for viscerai, but then again, also got it also got used for um, briar. Sometimes it's like a sideboard mm -hmm. piece for like Lexi and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mainly a viscerai tool because of Sonata, but yeah, conceivably can also be used in briar. Uh, not so much in chain because you are running the husk, which we'll talk about later most of the time, but. Definitely in Viscerai, just absolute nuts. If you could pick up like a cheap copy of the, these uh, unlimited uh, armor pieces, very, very good. Uh, Rattlebones is one of those cards that just lets you recycle and recycle. I don't know. You just you want to you want to run Swarming Gloomvale four Gloomvale. times in Blitz. 
you run two rattle bones and then you get pitch for three yeah you're gonna get or pitch for two you get your rattle bones swarming and rattle bones is so good because it also can come it was the uh Creepers before Creepers was the thing. Yeah. This was the Creepers because you do arcane damage. It's the hipster Rabo's Creepers. Instant. It was hipster Creepers. You gain yourself two action points. You dust off your dust off your hands. Maybe you play a toll. Maybe you should draw mm. some cards. Maybe you should just like go bananas. Not literally. That is not a legal card in play. <laughs> we will not be talking about it. Um, but it's just such a good recycling card that lets mm-hmm. you really be able to pick your spots and be yeah. able to go even and wider. Before Sonata, it would actually pair very well into Skeleta. You can get the discount on on your uh, rattle bones and mm-hmm. just yep. get a free card. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, discount on rattle bones, and then you can like stack it with like whatever because you just probably you still have whatever rune chance you have left. Maybe you're grabbing yourself ninth blade. Maybe you block with it earlier, and now oh That's look at that classic. ninth blade. You you have you have four rune chance. You pitch you pitch for three. You have rattle bones. You have the double discount. What are you doing with that last pitch? You're playing ninth blade of the blood oath for like, nine it's damage pretty... and a billion rune chance. <laughs> Yeah, four four rune chance create one in the stack and nine, and it's just oh, it's tremendous. So that's kind of our crucible uh, run down here. I'm gonna yeah. throw it over to Rob for our next set. Perfect. So now we are into the first talented set of the game. This is Monarch, uh, a very popular set at the time, and I think it's still a great set. I I, I love Monarch a lot. Um, the first card I'm gonna touch upon is Luminaris. So this is a weapon that was released specifically for illusionists it allows you to gain go again uh if you pitch a yellow so all of your i believe your auras and all attack actions i believe maybe gain go again i forget the exact uh wording. yeah it, it was it was the auras all auras. I believe, with the with the yellow with the yellow in the pitch zone there we go so it is probably Aura the tokens, only weapon auras. is the only weapon that prism really runs uh, no one runs the iris and prism is a very good deck right now and i think mostly due to luminaris being a thing if Luminaris wasn't in the game, Prism would not be nearly as strong as she is right now. So if you're looking to play no. maybe, you know, a top tier deck in Prism, Luminaris is a must pick, I think. Uh, next, we have Soul Shield. So Soul Shield, of course, is run um, in all light heroes. I believe Bolton might play it as well. Um, I think, I think, I think Bolton, Bolton will, player, would play it. It is a light specific card that all light heroes can play. Because um, it goes in Soul, right? Reaction. Exactly. You pitch two, mm-hmm. block for six, which is pretty good on its own. And then it goes to Soul, yep. which is pure synergy with any of the light heroes so yeah that's remember that can only get better i think as more light heroes come out so i think it's yeah good. yeah yeah it's definitely de- definitely i agree with that i also want to mention that it follows our uh zero for four one to five two to six rule that doesn't actually only apply to attack to actions attacks. it also applies to defense Cost reaction defense. Uh, it, it's it's just it's just the words to live by you know what i mean so it actually yeah. also applies to reactions yep yeah, there we go it also follows the same stat line as the pulse which we will, we'll talk about later but two for six is really good and yeah, goes to soul, so really good synergy there. Next card I have here is a specific card to chain for now, but it is the Shadow of Urser. Uh, we put it here mostly because it's a blue card that blocks for three, costs zero, which if you have those three things together, you're already looking at a good card no matter what, I think. And the effect just synergizes so well with chain's ability. You bash a card, then you gain go again. So, you know, you get a free card to play after that, and then hits for two could be annoying. Um... But yeah, the fact that you can you know go for zero, it can be played from Banish, I believe, because it is a blood yep. deck card. So super good card. If you're playing Chain, this is a must run. You know, two or three of uh, yeah. Blitz versus not not, per- not particularly expensive. These Monarch cards they, they do have an unlimited set, so I would definitely go around um, looking to mm-hmm. buy. And this was this was the first set. Well, Crucible was the first set, but this was the first core set that came out with the combining supers and majestics, right? Um, right. And as such, more mon- more uh, majestics come with every pack of monarch. I believe yeah. six to seven on average. Every so box. Yeah. if you are, yeah, if you are, there are a lot more majestics via cracking that you would have to get. I would recommend buying singles when it comes to uh, majestics in monarch because you might end up. You should cr- you can crack some, but then just buy singles for the rest of them because they're not that expensive, mm-hmm. uh, and it will be very hard for you to complete your majestic set with any majestic yeah. from monarch onwards. Yeah, and the the unlimited boxes are fairly cheap, uh, which drives the singles prices down as well. So yeah, like six sixty six, sixty five bucks a box. Yeah, like yeah, that. they're they're sitting on shelves pretty much. So, um, yeah, that's Shadow Reverser. Next, I've got the only legendary that I want to talk about because I don't like to bring up legendaries that much because they're they're expensive and they're usually for one class specifically unless you're talking about tunic and skull cap. But this is mm-hmm. the carry on husk. So this is a uh, um, an armor piece that you would run in both Levia and Chain in almost 
all the time. I don't think either hero slides these out. Maybe Chain does a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Chain probably... <laughs> no, no worries. Chain wouldn't uh, generally side this out unless they don't need the Null Rune against... Like, uh, they need like Null Rune or something else versus yeah. uh, Dano or something else That's like fair. that. But, like... but um, the ability to pivot on a six block card, you know, one time is just amazing. Levia can turn off the so blood debt, and Chain doesn't really care if he has blood debt, so <laughs> being True. honest there. True. But usually his lose condition is to fatigue himself, so you don't really care about the blood mm -hmm. debt that much. So blocking for six, um, wanting to keep a five card hand for something special, it blocks out C and C in one one card, which is, I think, fantastic. That's a very, very, very good. So yeah, I'll mention that as a pretty much must buy if you're playing a shadow hero. But, um, I mean, you know, you don't have to break the bank. It's a good card, but you not a must it. buy. But we would recommend you look it's, at it greatly. <laughs> if, you, if you had the choice of legendary, I'd go with Carry On Husk, and it's only going to get better as more Shadow Heroes come out. It is Shadow generic, I'll say. So it's yep. any Shadow Hero. Yep. Next, we have the oh, the dreaded Sonata. <laughs> so this is a card that came out in Monarch, of course, and it has basically caused Rune Blades to just man. You play a Sonata, so cost zero. Look at top three cards. If you have a mix of attack and non-attack, you can take one attack to your hand for every non-attack that has been shown. That paired with Skeleta, because you can discount your Sonata, um, you can look at like you know, six to seven plus cards on top of your deck, take two or three attack actions to your hand for zero. It doesn't cost anything, and it pings Arcane to your opponent. <laughs> uh, so this card, yep. I believe it blocks two, but that's not really that important. Blocks for two, yeah. Uh, it's it's an excellent card, non-attack action card that synergizes really well with Chain, Briar, um, as well as uh, Viscerai, of course. So Viscerai being the main one, yeah. Viscerai being the main one, yeah. Really good into Briar as well. I think it's just played in all, all Rune Blades, so I would definitely get this card if you could. Uh, who knows if an errata is coming up? I, I'm not sure. They will, they will release a new ban list or at least a new ban announcement on May 2nd. So mm -hmm. coming up in about a month here, but um, so as of this recording, we as don't of know. This but recording, like... we don't know exactly. Yeah. But uh, a really good card, uh, three of for sure. And the last card I want to talk about is Nourishing Emptiness. So this is oh, kind I've... of all, all, all the great card for making puns for tournament names for other people. <laughs> yeah, hear. it is it's absolutely uh, great. A generic, just like the E Strike and the CNC was. It's kind of like filling that slot that the other you know CNC and E Strike filled in the other sets. Um, yep. Generic card. It is a I believe two for six. Is a two for six, yep. Great. And the effect is, uh, you know, if it hits, you get one extra intellect. Oh, first of all, dominate, guaranteed. And then if, if you hits... have, well, it's, it's oh, not guaranteed. I'm sorry. You need yes. no, no, no attack actions in yeah. the graveyard. So for some heroes, it is guaranteed, such as like Gu Kano if you only yeah. run one. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to mention that only certain heroes would play this card because it does not turn on if you have attack actions in your graveyard, as Eric mentioned. Mm -hmm. So Kano, of course, is, does not play attack action cards, so very good in, in that deck. And you look at other heroes like Dory and Kasai because they have they're mostly weapon oriented. They play uh, attack mm -hmm. reactions and non attack action cards to gain go again, so they don't have any attack actions. So running a single copy of this to gain a single point of intellect for your next turn, really good. And yeah. certain heroes just can't block the dominate. Uh, they don't run in a farmer, so yep. you know it's um, it's a very good card in certain decks. Um, not yep. for everyone, of course. Doesn't run in that, most decks. Yeah. But is a good card. not not a not a like a key card in many decks but the decks that do run it cards uh decks like you know kasai dory can run it all the warrior classes kano can run it it's very uh it's got a very good stat line mm -hmm. and it it does have like five intellect is is huge having an extra card especially if you're able to arsenal card you you have six cards yeah. like effectively yeah. you have six cards right including kano, your arsenal. that's pretty much gg if kano gets that <laughs> so. it, it's it's very very hard to uh protect yourself after that so <laughs> that's that's monarch in a nutshell here so we're gonna roll on to uh toa and this is the first set first core set that has come out with three heroes instead of four right and so that changed that's the true. dynamic for a lot of the different kind of majestics and support because it also has elements as a key kind of keyword uh lightning earth and ice mm -hmm. and the heroes that came out were dual dual elemental heroes being uh, ice lightning uh, Ice Earth or Lightning Earth uh, for Lexi, Oldham, and Briar, respectively. And so a lot of the cards uh, cater towards different elemental builds. Uh, and, and that's kind of where where a lot of the power from the set ar uh, arises. This, this particular set also got drafted heavily for the national season. So a lot of people are more familiar with the set. They are more mm -hmm. comfortable with the set. 
And with that comes a lot of power in the set because all the all, all the baseline power levels haven't really changed for Monarch. It's just like a different flavor. And so the cards I'm going to be talking about here is first, Oak and Old. This is Asterix for now. Again, didn't get hit right. yet, we but it's know. possible it gets hit. There is risk, yeah. There is not. It is not an ultimate specialization. It's got him in the damn card, but it's not a specialization. I I still don't understand how his mat is the oak and old mat, and yet it's endless winter is the yeah. specialization. Anyways, I'm not opposed not, to them putting the specific heroes and non-specialization cards because we have uh, Mangle, which maybe one day we'll have a very cool guardian. Oh, okay, okay, okay but this is it. very. This is like in set too. Yeah. This is like <laughs> yeah, in the set, set. You're printing this card. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so oak and old, extremely generic. I mean. I, I don't know how much I have to talk about. Like, like everyone has seen Starvo lately. Like yeah. everyone has, has seen yeah. that. Even with uh, pitch stacking with your old hymns, you know, yeah, it, it's really the, just a very powerful I guess, card. Flagship card in old hymn. You know, the, the main, it only costs three. The red card yep. you have only costs. It's three. a three. It's a th <laughs> yeah. it's a three for seven. Which, as you might recall, if you're doing your math, it does fit our curve. Two for six, three for seven, right? So true. we're all we're all follow we're all following the magical curve here. Uh, it does come in for nine dominant if you double fuse it, but it's it's still like it's still a good uh, on curve kind of attack if you want to swing it at him. But like that extra uh, on hit effects, not a crush effect, an on hit effect mm -hmm. uh, to put two cards to the bottom uh, on hit is is just very very strong. And it's uh, if you want to play Starvo, you absolutely need three of them. If you want to play Oldham, you absolutely need three of them. It can possibly be, I believe it's an elemental guardian card. So there yeah. would have to be, I don't think in the next couple sets, I don't think they're going to release another one. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but this I would say if you like, want to play those two classes, set. you need to. <laughs> this was this was this, was this was a heavy guardian here, uh, as if they needed more help here. Following with guardian, we got Winter's Whale, which is uh, used by Starvo and Ultim. Go figure. So Winter's Whale is one of those elemental uh, weapons. weapons. I think it's an ice, I think it's an ice... An ice weapon or an ice guardian weapon? I think it's, I think it's just, just an, guardian elemental. Just, elemental guardian mm, weapon. Yeah. Yeah, okay, elemental guardian weapon. That, that makes a lot of sense. So mm -hmm. uh, does hit the frost spike, comes in for four. The first usable first-handed weapon, I think, right? Like when we're, we're looking at yeah. like I mean, uh, first-handed weapons that make a whole lot of sense. It did come out with the ramp part of the ram's head. It does kind of make sense thematically. True. Uh, very, very good majestic card if you do run, run, run Starvo or ult him. Uh, I would definitely pick up a copy of Winter's Will. All of these Majestics from Toa, same idea as Monarch. The Unlimited sets are in very heavy supply. There's a lot of Toa everywhere. Shouldn't be too hard to pick up this card for fairly cheap. Mm -hmm. So I definitely consider Winter's Will as a strong uh, a strong card if you want to play those I'll two classes. In, in Limited, in Draft, this is an excellent card to pick up. <laughs> yeah, well, while we're not, we're all, well, all of our kind of reviews here are talking more of the constructed metas. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about draft more later. If you pick up this pack one, pick one, you just go old him. I mean, just yeah. <laughs> just try to force it if you can. It's just like you'll be fine. Just grab a whole bunch of ice blues, you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, with that, the other weapon that we're talking about, Voltaire, it's specific more to Lexi, it is more hero based. However, I feel like this card kind of revolutionized a play style around like that combined with new horizon really really like yeah. provided a different kind of power level that we haven't seen before creating like that enabling a second arsenal i think this card is more on here for future use i don't think currently it's seeing like you really you played in lexi and that's it yeah but i do see space for like another ranger coming through being able to use this card effectively mm -hmm. overall it's, power level very strong yeah kind of like luminaris for prism Right, it kind of fits mm -hmm. that category. It was revolutionary for that specific hero, but it has a lot of potential for growth once new heroes come out. I agree. Uh, pulses, all three of them, really. I think they're different kind of maybe categories because, like, obviously the pulses can only be used by the respective heroes and Starvo, obviously. Yeah. Uh, because you know why not? <laughs> and, Starvo uh, can play all three. <laughs> so partially the reason is these pulses are very strong in those particular heroes. You can only play one of them. They are le they are legendary, as in you can only play one. They are majestics, though. Uh, they are very strong in their old right. Uh, the Eyes and Loft, two for six. Hitting on that D-React, very good in Ultim, very good in uh, Starvo. And the Pulse being able to... The Pulse of... Um, Volt Haven and Lexi, just the just the plus four. I think it's zero. It's just yeah. zero for a plus zero four. four. So again, you see, we're again we're fitting those curves. I'm gonna keep repeating myself over and over again. We're hitting those curves. <laughs> zero for four here. Uh, sweet. Uh, Starvo can add it onto the hammer. Uh, it's very very good for Lexi, adding that plus four to like an arrow or something like that. And it's 
is generically strong card and then candle hold being able to put two cards to the top to be able to stack and maybe mm -hmm. stack either something from beginning with like a plunder on and blitz i guess it used to be valid in cc but just like in blitz you could still do that yeah. uh, on briar mm -hmm. but also able to kind of oh you can play a pulse and then you can play your ravis rabble because you know there's a red on top or something like that so it allows a little more card fixing maybe you want to play out a very specific turn and just block up with armor and play out your hand it's a very good setup card. So all three of the pulses are quite good. In the future, I think there will be more more heroes that can utilize the pulse. So it's yeah. also kind of on there. You only need one of each. I suggest you just pick up one of each. They're not particularly expensive, yeah, especially in unlimited. Foil unlimited, maybe like five bucks max for some. Yeah, maybe five about yeah. five bucks a pop. Like I, I think picking up a set of pulses can definitely like set you up quite well. Uh, the channel cards are a little bit more niche, but they're still good. Channel Mount Heroic, Channel Lake Frigid, mm -hmm. uh, Channel Thunderstep. Channel Su Channel Thunderstep. That's Thunderstep. not the one on our list, but we put no. Lake and Mountain on the list. Uh, Lake is the one that's seeing the most play because Ice is just uh, Ice is the one that's coming up here because of all the disruption for the aggressive metas that we've seen in the last like mm -hmm. six months, I would say. Uh, Ice is definitely coming up as being the way to stop a channel. Lake Frigid is super good in draft constructed. Uh, any ice hero, uh, mainly mainly Oldham and Star will play this, but Lexi can play it. Uh, ice Lexi, it's definitely like a, a must, but Lightning Lexi is like you can, but you know depends on what you're trying to yeah. do. Very very good card. It's slowing down the opponent so efficiently. It's um, getting it out for one turn is usually what you want to do at least. Getting out for at two least, and yeah. you're you're doing you're doing good stuff that game <laughs> get it out for two turns my god you get it out for two turns mount heroic is a little bit more specific uh the earth briar is the deck that really pushed it out i i don't know if i would recommend buying that over mm -hmm. lake if you're if you're looking for the most flexibility i would say i, I would rate channel lake first then channel mount uh yeah. then thunderstep is probably where i would rank it uh but mm -hmm. for now rank it sorry uh for now that's kind of where i see it but mount i think could be late good later in the yeah. In, in when more sets come out, especially for elemental cards. It's, it's interesting because for Channel Mount, you kind of look at the card and you're like, it kind of sounds like it might be better. Well, not better, but because it, it's geared towards Earth heroes that are more defensive, I feel, by nature. It's like, but then Briar kind of took it in an aggro way where she played all these red cards that all gained ability, the ability to gain plus three. Um, so Channel Mount seemed like very niche at this point. It's like mm -hmm. you played only in, in the Briar deck that can run a bunch of reds where old him can't really do that. I mean, there's the more aggressive build, I think, but I don't think they run Channel Mount as far as I know. I, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. One one, one day. <laughs> one day. But anyway, uh, it's, it's pretty niche right now as it stands. So Yeah, I agree. Last card we kind of threw on here is Tear Sunder. Uh, also a very good draft card, but good generically speaking, especially because Bravo can use this. Not Starvo. Bravo, yes. Yeah, still a hero. Still exists. Very, very good three of in Bravo, just FYI. But also, you know, used in... Um, Used in Starvo, used in Ultim is just a good blue three cost, so it can you know pump your Anothos if you need that extra mm, you know extra cost. Uh, blocks for three, gains that that <clears throat> plus one dom dominate um, yep. with the on such hits. a good on hit effect. Like two cards, it's just so so good. Yeah. I mean, costs three obviously, but if you're Guardian, you're playing a shit ton of blues anyways, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is on the list because there are three Guardians at the moment, and all of them can play them quite well to tear asunder and very very cheap card like a couple bucks a card like one of those cards that if guardian interests you at all and something you the, you know lss seems to definitely favor the guardian class and so mm -hmm. special <laughs> probably gu probably guardian and rune yeah probably guardian and rune blade are the two, two classes that aren't going away anytime soon Fair. so def definitely like terra sunder's power level adding the because the the weapons for guardians don't have like particularly scary on hits but adding that mm -hmm. the uh the dominate and the on hits very very strong so that's kind of our like toa toa rundown yeah all right we are into the second supplemental set which is the final set that we are going to talk about today the final set that they've released as of this recording it is everfest so the first card i want to talk about is you know as a brute lover um swing big it is going to be used probably by all brutes maybe not levia but at least for ko and reiner it is a great card it is a two costed for eight so looking at that curve that eric was talking about earlier that is two damage above above curve. curve uh it yep. has a negative ability though which kind of makes sense because we're above curve however the ability isn't even that bad if the opponent fully blocks it they get a quicken token it's kind of hard to utilize a random quicken token though 
because a lot of heroes have to set up for that kind of thing with their flock of the feather walkers if i just give them a quicken token they might not even use it you know they might have built in go again that's just gonna waste the quicken token so i think it's not even that bad to be frank mm -hmm. and it's eight damage if they're blocking that eight anyway you did pretty well for yourself i think so a uh, very good card for brutes all around i think it's it deserves a spot in this list Next, we have a powerhouse of a card called Pulverize. So this is the currently the strongest card in the game, stat-wise. 14 mm. damage, and it has a really good synergy with certain cards, uh, mainly with Awakening. So you can pull out with yep. Awakening, um, as well as for Rouse the Ancients. You can use this single card to trigger Rouse the Ancients' ability. Uh, Rouse says you gotta when you play Rouse you gotta show your opponent um, a total attack value of thirteen I believe from your hand, mm -hmm. and if you do it yep. gains go again and plus seven. So, you know, really good with that, and it is a guardian generic, you know, for all guardians card. So mm -hmm. you know it, it's got its uses of course in, in Valda it is great. Valda's not that good right now, but it can be used in Valda, and it can definitely be played into uh, into Bravo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have as for a Bravo sure. player or as a. Uh, <laughs> as a guardian player do you have any more comments about pulverize i think pulverize is really good at like capitalizing on bravo strength specifically like your turn one heave really really good use of uh, resources in bravo's kit to be able to carry forward resources right so like if you're playing bravo you pitch for tectonic plating and then heave you're able to just play out pulverize for six right and it really enables you to like search for another card with showtime maybe mm -hmm. uh and it's able to kind of capitalize on that strategy, right? It's definitely not a go wide card. This is a go tall <laughs> card, but and, it's uh, go really tall. Still on curve, by the way. Oh yeah. Still on curve. Oh yeah. yeah zero, 10, zero, for four, four, 10, 10 for 14. 10 for 14. 10 yeah, 10 for 14. Right. Yep. 10 still on curve. <laughs> and um, I forgot to mention the on hit too, which makes the opponent's first attack minus four yep. on their next attack. Not, so. not, a, not a crush. This it is, is an on hit, meaning it'll probably hit. If you get it off, the opponent does not have a turn pretty much. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Very, very weak in turn. Yeah. Okay, next no, we have sure. uh, the Rune Blade cards. So these are cards that came out that are like essential for all Rune Blades. They are so good. The first one is Revel in Rune Blood, the card that I think has the biggest bang for its buck in uh, in Viscerai because Viscerai can create one additional Rune Chant when you play it. But basically, a zero cost that creates four Rune Chants. It is kind of that zero for four stat line that you're talking about. Uh, yep. But then nope, you create one sure. extra one with Viscerai, so it's kind of like a zero for five. Um. Yeah, exceptional card. Um, next, we have Swarming Gloomvale. So on that same vein, another Runeblade card, a 0 for 3. However, it does gain additional effects for every aura you've created for that turn. So, uh, you know, as Viscera, you are creating rune chants left and right. Of course, you're going to get the yep. ability off. Uh, it gains plus 1 for 1. I believe it's go again for 1 aura, plus 1 yep. for 2 auras, for and, two, yeah. and 3 auras. Your opponent cannot block, or rather, arcane. on hit, your opponent cannot block arcane. Yeah, so, so what you want to really do is you want to sneakily, yeah, sneakily creepers out like a, like a read the runes or something to create like a rune chant on viscerai, and then you have you're actually coming in for four, you're not coming in for three again, you know, all, yeah. all that all that good stuff and sneak in the sneak in that one damage to get the uh, unblockables. Yeah. yeah, so very good card. It is a I think a three of in pretty much every rune blade that I can think of. Next yep. we have a wizard card, Aether Wildfire. This card, whoa, wizard of, card, whoa, wizard, whoa. Yeah, so this card uh, really kind of changed a bit of the wizard game plan a little bit. Not in the sense that it changed how they play, but in the sense that now they can they have a very good kill threat on your turn, even more so than before. Uh, Wildfire yeah. costing two, dealing four arcane, and then for every arcane that you de that you uh, deal, it buffs all of your mm -hmm. attack, non attack attack, well, all of your arcane damaging. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they're arcane, yeah, because they're they're yeah they're not attacks. They're all non attacks. Yeah, but um, I always make that confusion. I get confused because they're non attack actions. That that's fair. Deal damage, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Yeah, yeah I think this card is like it's very very good because it finally gives Kano like a way out of having to play forked lightning. Like if you don't want to play forked lightning anymore, there is another win con, right? Yeah. And so playing playing this automatically made cards like snap back a lot better because on their turn. uh you know, you play the wildfire to get the second effect, and snapback comes in as an instant when you've played another card, right? So, getting the wildfire, the resolve, and and buffing the damage does lead to like uh, different kind of combinations, ending off with like a blazing aether or something like that. So, it does give the Kano deck uh, more enders, definitely at least a one of. If you want to play Kano, I think Wizard in general, honestly, if you're you're like a Wizard yeah. kind of player and you're waiting for that next Wizard uh, kind of 
class. Maybe maybe, maybe Kano and Iceland are not do, doing it for you. I think Wildfire <laughs> is going to be that, like, yeah. two of, at least. Um, yeah. At least in the sideboard and, very, and various kind of strategies. So it's just a generically strong kind of wizard card. And even on your turn, two for five with the Crucible, there's nothing to scoff at, right? So it's still not That's too true. bad. It's almost on Voltic level, I guess. Voltic would have been two for five mm-hmm. plus one, so two for six. Well, but anyway, it'll be two for six, yeah. It's, yeah. it's close. It's close enough, yeah. All right, next on the list I have Shimmers of Silver. This is a uh, Illusionist card, only for Prism right now. It's the only Illusionist we've got. But whenever you attack with an Aura, the first time you attack with an Aura, it gains plus one, and that counter stays. So this gives you the ability to kind of pump all of your Auras gradually. Uh, it's kind of a card that gives you kind of more board state presence. Your Auras do that by, itself, by themselves, but the plus one is very threatening. And... You can put it on an aura that your opponent is not likely to break anytime soon, or an aura that you think that is kind of lower priority. You keep it on the field. Zero for four, zero for five every turn. It is really strong. <clears throat> Pardon yep. me. So I, I no put it worries. there as kind of a an aura-centric type of card, but a very powerful card. And the artist. Yeah, is definitely nice. saw. Yeah, definitely saw. Even on the mat too. The mat's very, very the mat nice. Is very but nice. Yeah. Even uh, with the rise of kind of aura prism to try to like harness harness that kind of meta meta call with Starvo, I think people are realizing that it's one of the aura, auras you just can't ignore, right? It just gets so out of hand, and then they just pump out a whole lot of ways to mm-hmm. like flood the board, and it's just like one of those you gotta kill it. It just it gets way too yeah. strong. You just the do nothing, you wait, block up, and you attack. For you, for you, so. Exactly, and, and that's that's is, saying something. It, it's kind of eclipsing other auras that you want to kill more. But you just can't ignore mm-hmm. it, right? You have the Genesis, exactly. or Ota Wrath that you really want to kill. But if that's on the yep. field, it's like, oh, I gotta get rid of that first. So it's really, really yeah. Good. It is also an Illusionist card. It's not a light Illusionist card, it's... so it is going to be playable with like maybe a generic Illusionist comes out or something. I think we're, we're due lines. for so one. Let's... We're due for something. Some Another. We only have one Illusionist. We only have one Illusionist. Right? Exactly. So. Yeah. And well, lastly on the list. Not least, but also not the most exciting card, the reprint it's, of Skullcap. It's, uh, it's, kind of, it's a bit of a dull card. <laughs> dull cap. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, that that's all I've got for Everfest. Um, mm-hmm. I think Everfest, just like Crew, brought a lot of cool stuff for every hero. Uh, and these are just the ones that we thought were the best of the cream of the crop, as they say. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, any final comments? Yeah, I wish we had like more extended arts and alternate arts. I know I know, it's like a, such a random comment, but I'm just like we sitting here thinking about... I mean, we got, we got a, a lot. lot. I just, I, I, I wanted to be more excited about them. It's like such a random like tangent as far as like card <laughs> values. It's not relevant, but like, I'm just I like want full arts. Mm-hmm. I, Anyways. I, uh, I really like Twinning Blade. I think that one needs to come back in some form. Do something cool like mm-hmm. that. I think I'd be really happy. I love the like poker the ex- card style of that card. Yeah, the the extended arts are nice, but it just left me wanting more. But like more as in like something better, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too uh too demanding here. But anyways, as far as like the card values, let's know if we've like missed any cards uh, for any particular reason. Uh, this is kind of our like as far as value wise cards that maybe as a beginner to intermediate player, you're kind of looking at different classes, mm. different heroes you want to get into. These are kind of uh, picks that we wanted to highlight. But of course, uh, this video can only be so long, right? Uh, we'll definitely have this one up on Spotify because I think this one will be a good one for people to like listen to in the car, listen to on transit. So check out our Spotify uh, if you'd rather listen to this uh, or part of this. Uh, if you do like this content, I think I already said it before, like, comment, subscribe, mm-hmm. of course. I'm just going to, like, throw them in different areas of the uh, video from now on. But <laughs> Surprise uh, with that, yeah. I know. Uh, with that, appreciate everyone for watching. Uh, no matter where you are watching this in the world, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Bye for now.